Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Does Science, and today I want to talk about the time evolution operator in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. Time evolution in quantum mechanics is governed by the Schrodinger equation, which tells us how quantum states change in time. The time evolution operator gives us an alternative way of doing this. Today we'll focus on the definition of the time evolution operator and in some of its most important properties. But moving forward, it will give us the tools to describe time evolution in terms of states through the so-called Schrodinger picture, or through operators in the so-called Heisenberg picture, or through a mixture of states and operators in the so-called interaction picture. So today's video is rather fundamental, but it will open the doors for many exciting new topics. So let's go! Time evolution in quantum mechanics is governed by the Schrodinger equation. It is given by ih bar times the derivative with respect to time of the state psi equal to the Hamiltonian h acting on the state psi. In this expression, the Hamiltonian here is the operator associated with the total energy of the system. The Schrodinger equation is a linear homogeneous first order differential equation in time. This means that once we have specified an initial condition, say the state of the system at time t0, then the solution of the Schrodinger equation, which here I abbreviate with the initials se, tells us the state of the system at any other time t. So, this is how time evolution works in quantum mechanics, and you can learn more about it in our video on the Schrodinger equation linked in the description. What I want to do today is to rephrase time evolution in a somewhat different language, making use of an operator called the time evolution operator. The key observation is that the Schrodinger equation is a linear equation, which implies that the correspondence between the state at time t0 here and the state at time t here is linear. Explicitly, imagine that the state at t0 is given by the linear superposition of two other states, psi1 of t0 and psi2 of t0, for some coefficients c1 and c2, which in general are complex numbers. Then, the fact that the Schrodinger equation is linear means that the state psi at time t is given by the same linear superposition of the state psi1 at time t and the state psi2 at time t. We can summarize this by stating that the correspondence between psi of t and psi of t0 is linear, which means that we can relate them by a linear operator u of t t0. The u operator is the time evolution operator, and it depends on two variables t and t0. The defining equation simply says that if we start with the state psi of t0 and we apply the time evolution operator u t t0 on it, then we obtain the state psi at time t. In the rest of the video, we'll explore the properties of the time evolution operator. Our definition of the time evolution operator up here is rather general. So the first thing we want to do is to learn more about the specific form that u takes. Let's start with the simplest case when both time arguments of the operator are the same. So we can write psi of t0 is equal to u t0 t0 acting on psi of t0. As psi is an arbitrary ket, then this implies that u t0 t0 is simply the identity operator. If we think about this for a moment, it makes sense. If time doesn't change, then the state doesn't change either, so the time evolution operator should simply be the identity operator. What about t different from t0? To figure this out, let's start with the Schrodinger equation. We can now expand the state psi of t in terms of the time evolution operator and the initial state, on both the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. The time dependence in this term in brackets is now entirely captured by u, and psi of t0 does not depend on t. This means that we can take it outside the derivative and then cancel it with psi of t0 on the other side. We end up with this equation for the time evolution operator. Putting everything together, we can completely specify the operator u t t0 by solving this first order differential equation we just derived, and then specifying the boundary condition up here. Next, I want to rewrite this equation in a somewhat different form that is also used very frequently. Let's start by isolating the derivative on one side and the rest to the other. And I have changed the name of the variable t to t prime for reasons that will become clear in a moment. Let's now integrate both sides of this equation with respect to t prime, 
and we're integrating from the initial time t0 to the final time t. So I wanted t as the upper integration limit here and here, and this is why I used t prime to start with. The left hand side is now very easy to integrate and gives u t t0 minus u t0 t0. This then equals the right hand side, which in general may be a difficult integral, so I'll just leave it as it is. We now know that u t0 t0 is simply the identity, so we end up with the time evolution operator equal to the identity and then this integral. So what have we accomplished? From a fundamental point of view, not much. All we've done is to start with the original differential equation and the boundary condition that we had up here, and then rewritten them together into this single integral equation. But in general, we're not any closer to finding a solution. So you may ask, why bother? The reason is that depending on the problem at hand, one or the other expression can be more convenient to work with, so it is very important to be aware of both. The next property I want to explore is the application of multiple time evolutions. Let's imagine we want to go from time t double prime to time t. Mathematically, we have this equation for the time evolution of the state psi. Let's now imagine that we still go between the same two times, but we first go from t double prime to an intermediate time t prime, and then from t prime to the final time t. Mathematically, the first step is given by this, and the second step is given by this. Let's now write the last step again. We can now insert this expression for the state at t prime into this term, and we end up with this final expression. Let's recap. In both these cases, the initial time is t double prime, here and here, and the final time is t, here and here. This equation and this equation describe the same time evolution, so they must be equal. This implies that u t t double prime is equal to u t t prime times u t prime t double prime. This is the key result of this slide. This equation shows how we can combine time evolutions together. We can of course generalize this argument, dividing our time interval into n steps, which don't have to be equal, and then we can write that the time evolution operator connecting t1 and tn is equal to the time evolution operator connecting tn minus 1 and tn, times the time evolution operator connecting tn minus 2 and tn minus 1, all the way to the time evolution operator between t2 and t3, and then between t1 and t2. Before we move on, I want to emphasize that this expression is general. It does not require that the different times are ordered. Let's go back to the composition of just two intervals as up here. Let's consider the case when t is equal to t double prime. We get u t t equal to u t t prime times u t prime t. We know that this is the identity operator, so we can write u t t prime times u t prime t as equal to the identity. We can make a similar argument to show that u t prime t times u t t prime equals the identity, and we can put these two results together to conclude that u t prime t is the inverse of u t t prime. So this is how we calculate the inverse of the time evolution operator, and the result actually makes sense. The inverse operator simply corresponds to reversing the arrow of time. The next property of the time evolution operator that I want to prove is that it is a unitary operator. And to do so, we first need to consider an infinitesimal time evolution. Let's start again with the Schrodinger equation. We can rewrite it as the infinitesimal change in the state psi equal to minus i over h bar times the Hamiltonian acting on the state psi, all multiplied by an infinitesimal change in time. We can also write the infinitesimal change in the state as the difference between the state at t plus dt and the state at t. This is still equal to the same expression, and we can then isolate the state at t plus dt to get this expression. 
In parallel, we know that the state at time t plus dt is related to the state at time t by this time evolution operator. Comparing these two equations, we see that u t plus dt t is equal to this. This operator is called the infinitesimal time evolution operator. With this infinitesimal operator, we're now ready to prove that the time evolution operator is a unitary operator. To do so, we need to recall a result from the video on unitary operators. If we have an operator u epsilon that is written like this, where f is a Hermitian operator and epsilon is an infinitesimal, then such an operator is a unitary operator. Comparing this result with our expression for the time evolution operator here, we see that they have the same form, and this implies that the infinitesimal time evolution operator is a unitary operator. The next step is to build a general time evolution operator u tt prime by combining together a very large number of infinitesimal time evolution operators like this. We now know from the video on unitary operators that the product of two unitary operators is itself unitary, so this implies that the general time evolution operator is also unitary. Overall, we can write that for the time evolution operator, the adjoint is equal to the inverse, which in turn is equal to the time evolution operator with the arguments reversed. Remembering the key property that unitary operators don't change the norm of quantum states, then this result makes sense. We know that time evolution as described by the Schrodinger equation conserves the norm, so we could have expected that the time evolution operator should be unitary. So far, we've introduced the time evolution operator, we've figured out the differential equation at the base, and we've looked into some of its properties. What I want to do to finish is to give you an example of a time evolution operator. And the example I've picked is one we already discussed in the video on the Schrodinger equation. I want to look at a conservative system. Remember that it is a system in which the Hamiltonian does not depend on time. In a conservative system, the time derivative of the time evolution operator is equal to the Hamiltonian acting on u t t0, where h is time independent. This equation can now be integrated directly to obtain the time evolution operator as equal to the exponential of minus i h times the time difference t minus t0, all divided by h bar. Just to be absolutely clear, this here is the product of the time independent Hamiltonian on the one hand and the time difference on the other. Okay, so this is an explicit expression for the time evolution operator which is valid when we have a conservative system. It is a rather useful expression, and to see an example of why, we'll prove again something we already showed in the video on the Schrodinger equation, but this time around we'll use the time evolution operator for the proof. What I want to prove is that the time evolution in conservative systems takes a rather simple form when working in the energy basis. To do so, let's start with the eigenvalue equation for the Hamiltonian of a conservative system, where the en are the eigenvalues and the un the eigenstates, both of which are time independent because h is time independent. The eigenstate of the Hamiltonian form a basis of state space, so we can write a general state at time t0 in the energy representation like this. And as always, the expansion coefficients are given by the bracket un psi. And again, they are time independent for a conservative system. Now let's consider the state psi at a different time t. By the definition of the time evolution operator, it is equal to u t t0 acting on psi at t0. We can plug in our expression for u as an exponential, and we can also write out the state in the energy basis. We can next move the exponential into the sum here, and we end up with this. As these are the energy eigenstates, then the action of the exponential of the Hamiltonian simply gives the exponential of the eigenvalues, and we end up with sum over n of Cn times this exponential, times the eigenstate. Now what does this mean? If we start at time t0, and our quantum state is given by this expansion in the energy basis, then at a later time t, our state will simply be given by the same expansion where each energy eigenstate has independently evolved according to an exponential 
that depends on the corresponding energy eigenvalue. As we discussed earlier, we already derived this result in the video on the Schrodinger equation, but this here shows how the time evolution operator allows us to approach the same problem in an alternative but equivalent way. If we go back to our differential equation for u up here, we've just shown that for a conservative system, then the time evolution operator has this simple form. At this point, you may be tempted to guess that if the Hamiltonian is time dependent, then the solution would look something like this. But is this true? Unfortunately, things are not so easy. Let's first assume that for t different from t prime, the Hamiltonians of the system at these different times commute. In this case, this expression for u would in fact be the correct solution. But in the most general case, the Hamiltonians at different times do not commute, and then this solution does not work. In this more general case, the solution can be written as a series, called a Dyson series, but we're going to leave that for another video. So, whether we study time evolution in quantum mechanics in terms of states, or in terms of the time evolution operator, things are relatively easy for conservative systems, but the problem becomes rather difficult when the Hamiltonian depends on time. Let's recap. The time evolution operator u is the operator that allows us to describe the evolution of a quantum state from time t0 to time t. The operator obeys this differential equation and is subject to this initial condition, and putting these two together we can completely specify the form of u. We've seen that we can stitch together different time evolutions, that the inverse of the time evolution operator is obtained by simply reversing the arrow of time, and that the time evolution operator is unitary. This last property is very useful because unitary transformations conserve the norm, so time evolution as encoded by the operator u does not change the normalization of quantum states as we evolve them in time. Finally, we've looked at the special case of conservative systems, for which the Hamiltonian is time independent, and in this case the time evolution operator takes this particularly simple exponential form. The time evolution operator is a convenient way to describe time evolution in quantum mechanics and is complementary to what we learned in the video on the Schrodinger equation. The next steps are to explore how we can use this operator in the so-called pictures of quantum mechanics. These include the Schrodinger picture, the Heisenberg picture, and the interaction picture. And as always, if you like the video, please subscribe.